because we are a city that is full of incredible and special people. Welcome to a new monthly program called Mayor Keller Block by Block. It's a chance to hear directly from Mayor Keller about the challenges and opportunities in our city. We have a lot to cover during this program, including transition team updates. And then later in the program, because we celebrate Valentine's Day this month, the mayor and the first lady will talk about what they love about Albuquerque. Mayor Keller, thank you so much for being here. Great to be here. I'm glad we're, we're talking about this stuff. Now, first off, as we talked about a month ago, as a new mayor, you faced one of the shortest transitions in Albuquerque's history because of the runoff election. And I know recently you had a capstone uh, transition team event, a one-of-a-kind community engagement event. And I'd like to know how you think that went as far as engaging the community in a dialogue and uh, really getting down to some key issues that are facing Albuquerque. You know, it was very special, and it's something that we think hasn't been done that often, even around the country. And so it was really an idea that came from the bottom up, too, in that a lot of folks who were involved in the campaign, but also just involved in the city, said, hey, how can we get engaged in the transition process? And we were like, well, it's already over. <laughs> and so, uh, but what we did is we took our time, and we allowed people, and 500 people came to the convention wow. center. And we broke up into different groups on different key topics and also different departments. And all we did really was listen. And that was actually the end of a process that we did uh, in small breakout sessions all through the month of January. And so I think, too, in our next Block by Block, we'll give some highlights from that and so forth. Awesome. But people really felt for the first time in decades that government was listening. And uh, that was very empowering, and that's also how we're building our four-year plan is from input from that event. That's awesome. I, I think it's great that you had 500 people attend that event, too. It was, and I think it shows, you know, one, I think hopefully some enthusiasm around changes at the city, but also uh, people are thirsty to get engaged for everything that's happening, whether it's at the national level or local level. Uh, people are like, you know what? Part of this is our responsibility, and so we're going to do our part to make our city a better place. That's great. You know, while we're on the topic of transition, last month you talked about uh, Michael Geyer was appointed chief of APD. Since then, you've also appointed a new fire chief and deputy fire chief. Yes, we're going through our various appointments and so <laughs> forth, and... Uh, our new uh, fire chief has all the just respect and credibility that you could ever want in a fire chief. And he's someone who's been uh, with our fire department for 20 years, Chief Dow, of course. And we're very proud of him. And I think he's going to run a great department. And, you know, each, each appointment's different. Fire has a very kind of hierarchical uh, setup. And so you kind of have to pull from the level below and the level below that. But the point is, by promoting someone from within, in this case, it also creates leadership opportunities all the way down the organization. And so I think that's a good thing for our fire department. Absolutely. Any other new department directors or departments you want to talk about? You know, we have lots uh, that are coming on. And it's very exciting to see we have Shell, Dr. Shell Sanchez, who's now in charge of cultural services. And we've also got a new city director of innovation and marketing, Carlos Contreras. Uh, we also are bringing in uh, kind of an old hand at Parks and Rec, and his name is um, Dave Simon. He's currently at the Jewish Community Center, but before that ran the state park system. And uh, we also brought in, I think since we last talked, uh, David Campbell at planning. And he used to be a CAO at the city, so yes. it brings a lot of experience. Yeah. Uh, so I think we're balancing out uh, fresh ideas and also seasoned experience. And another example of that is Cynthia Jaramillo, who comes over with 20 years of experience at the Hispano Chamber, but also is a new generation of leader. And she's the first woman director of economic development the city's ever had. Wow, lots of stuff going on. And I know you've been busy with policy issues as well. I know you announced recently that you're going to follow the national climate agenda and that Albuquerque will uphold the goals basically of the Paris Climate Agreement, which basically means setting goals for greenhouse gas emissions. Talk to us about that a bit. 
You know, this is something that uh, uh, dozens of mayors all across America have signed on to, and uh, thousands across the world, actually. So this is a global effort, and it's something that is very reasonable, and it just puts a stake in the ground and says we care about climate change, and we're going to measure our contributions toward that and work towards reducing those contributions. And for me, it's a way to step up and say uh, we're going to take control of our own future, even right here in Albuquerque, uh, with respect to what we're doing uh, with, uh, that contributes to climate change. And this is something, too, that, uh, you know, as I mentioned, many mayors in, mm -hmm. uh, in our country have done. But I think it's a way for cities also to say that we are, as a metro area in New Mexico, uh, we really drive climate issues, actually, and environmental issues for a huge region around us. And so that's why I think it's very appropriate that actually Albuquerque have a clear stance and a clear policy. And so I was happy to sign on to that. Oh, absolutely. When, and you think about it, like you said, in central New Mexico, it's not just Albuquerque, but it's part of that four-county area where, like, 40% of the state's population resides, yeah. so mm -hmm. I can see that being an environmental driver. Now, last month you signed your first bill as mayor, and you recently signed an executive order to speed up the process of fixing the backlog of rape kits. How's that going? You know, this is something that is kind of unfinished business for us. Uh, in the state auditor's office, we measured the backlog for the first time in New Mexico's history, and we found out that two-thirds of it, or three-fourths of it, is actually right here in Albuquerque. Wow. And the uh, chunk over at the state, uh, they have a plan, they're working on it, and that's a good thing. Albuquerque just lagged behind. There was, I think, some ideas, some, some efforts, but we really just scratched the surface. And there's still, today, uh, is no plan in place to end the backlog uh, in Albuquerque. So that's what that executive order did. It just drew a line in the sand and said, we are going to come up with a plan. And if that plan requires funding, if it requires prioritization, whatever it might say, you know, we'll get behind the plan. But the first step was just saying, you know what? We're going to stop ignoring that it's there sure. or stop trying to fix a part of it. We're actually going to face it head on. Good for you. The New Mexico legislature is now in session. Can you share with us some of the highlights of the city's legislative agenda? Sure. You know, the legislature is always a, a fun time of year for <laughs> me, having spent six years well, that's up right. there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there are lots of, lots of old friends and colleagues. Um, but I think what we've learned and what we're trying to do is we're just trying to really focus. So there's all sorts of initiatives that I personally support, that I voted on in the past and are, am versed in. But uh, we wanted, it's a short budget session, and so we really wanted to focus, at least from the city perspective, uh, on crime. That's definitely the number one issue. And so we have three or four proposals that uh, we're hoping to get essentially resources and support to deal with crime, and also some changes to sentencing in our criminal justice system. And I think on the latter part, those seem to be moving through the system. I think we're going to get a lot of help there. I think a lot of our area Albuquerque legislators are helping us with some equipment needs. Uh, but, which is not unexpected, uh, we're going to have to deal with our police shortage as a city. I, I don't expect the state to really help out, even though I would really like them to. Sure. So we wanted to put in that ask, but uh, we know if we have to, we're going to stand on our feet and solve our own problems, and hopefully the legislature will help, but if not, uh, it's our responsibility. Sure. Nice to see it be part of the solution, and I'm sure for you, being on the other side of it, it must be helpful or at least interesting to know how legislators think and what they deal with as far as time constraints, especially in a the short 30-day budget-oriented session. Yeah, and that really, I think, is key, uh, knowing that you know, you have to have a message from the governor to have a bill go through, right. uh, you know, or it has to be a budget bill. And so I think, you know, every year, and I saw this even in the legislature, I would run dozens of bills, even though it was a short session. But I kind of knew that none of those were germane, which is sure. the term. And so, um, you know, everyone has all these high hopes for change going in. In a short session on any topic, it's almost impossible unless the governor wow. is really putting their full weight behind it. So that's why we have a focus message this time. And um, I think it's also uh, it's a pragmatic way to deal with the legislature instead of um, you know just sort of throwing high level talking points about you know helping crime and this kind of thing. We're trying to be specific. How can we actually make a difference in a meaningful way? Yeah, make the most of your time. Absolutely. You've been busy making appearances at various events. I know you went to Comic Con and you participated in the march on Civic Plaza. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and also the Women's March. So tell us about your feelings on those events. 
Well, you know, one of the great things about uh, being mayor is you obviously have a real job in terms of governing the city and so forth, but there's also an important, uh, you know, somewhat symbolic role about standing up for issues in public, not only that you care about, but that are important to the city and participating in everything that's going on in the city. And so I try and do that as much as I can, and especially in key areas when it comes to social justice, um, anti-racism, uh, combating structural racism. These are all issues that we brought up in the context of the MLK March and MLK Day. And something that is also a way for me to connect what I've done in the legislature and some of those more civil rights bills sure. to what we're doing at the city. And so to me, it's a very powerful way to engage and a way to be helpful. And then the Women's March is, is awesome. I mean, we've done that now two years. And uh, I've got a, a four-year-old myself, mm -hmm. a four-year-old daughter, and um, my wife spoke at it this time. And it was just a, it was an honor for me to sit and listen uh, to all the different people who spoke and to also stand uh, together, and especially in the context of Me Too and things like this that are happening around our country. I thought that march was, as it was last year, extremely important uh, for a mayor to personally be at. Keeping your finger on the pulse of what's going on in the city outside of the office as well as inside. Absolutely. And speaking of the Women's March, joining us now is First Lady Liz Kiston Keller, who was at the march and spoke there, as we saw. We're so pleased to have you on today. Thank you. It's great to be here. Let me just give the audience a few highlights about your bio. First of all, you were born and raised here in Albuquerque. Um, you have a BA in Political Science and Latin American Studies, also a PhD in International Development Studies. You're a Rhodes Scholar. You currently work at Sandia National Laboratories in Complex Systems Analysis and Strategic Future but before that, you spent years working on global water issues. Um, on top of that, you are the mother of two young children. So where do you find time to be the First Lady of Albuquerque? It's <laughs> a good question. It's uh, certainly a balancing act as we figure out right how to juggle and give the right amount of time to all of these roles both as a mom and as a wife, yes. as a professional, as a first lady. Um, but I think so far uh, we're working through it. Um, it's a really exciting time for our city. So as we continue to explore how to make time for all those different roles, it feels like a real luxury and a real opportunity to have a chance to contribute in some small way. Cool. Well, I think you've been doing doing it very graciously, oh, accepting you. your role. And, and how do you... Uh, I mean, we saw you at the Women's March. Um, you're obviously uh, not shy about engaging the community in some of the issues that you feel strongly at, at, about as well. How do you envision your role as First Lady, and, and what would you like it to be defined by? Sure, it's a great question. I think, um, first off, it's, it's one we're still exploring, so we'll continue to evolve as we move forward. But the way I think about it now is trying to find um, some ways and in some sort of focus sense to be able to bring some of my energy and some of my expertise in systems analysis and network solutions um, in a way that adds value to a lot of the hard work that's already being done by folks in the city and with some key partners. Some of that's around bridge building, some of that's around research analysis, some of that's around connecting us to folks um, and organizations all over the country um, to think about new ideas and new approaches. Uh, so for the moment, the, the first focus of that for me is around the issue of public safety, mm. to think about how do we leverage some of the amazing expertise and the amazing sure. resources we've got right here to create the kind of collaborative partnerships that allow us to augment the local capacity we have right here in the city. Wow, and it sounds like an exciting role for you. It you know, is. Thinking about these topics and things that are facing the city, and certainly, Mayor Keller, I'm sure, you're happy to have the support of the First Lady in some of these areas. <laughs> she's, she's better than me in a lot of things, uh, including a lot of policy areas. And so uh, finding that, starting, I think, with a piece around community policing, it's just a great fit for background and the needs of the city right now. Sure. And I've got to say, it's tremendously energizing. So we sort of did a trial run in January where I took vacation days on Wednesdays to be able to be doing city work and conversations oh, nice. with different partners one day a week. And then starting in February, we'll, we'll go down to a few less hours at work, still sure. working, working a lot, but to be able to have that time. Um, 
and it's, you know, there are pieces of it that are exhausting balancing all of these roles, sure. but it's been really energizing as well to see the energy from folks and, and experts in City Hall, but also all the partners who are engaging and looking for collaborative solutions to some of these big challenges. Oh, it does sound very exciting, and I, I can respect the idea of starting with a vacation day here and there, because <laughs> you're probably feeling at this point like, I can't clone myself, so I'm going to need to make an appointment with my different duties so that you don't get completely overwhelmed by yes. it, like you say, and you, you stay kind of continually energized by the process. Absolutely. And we rely on a tremendous village of family and friends who help us sort of navigate, make time for those pieces, um, and, and help us recharge too, in a way, so we can have the right amount of energy to serve in this new way. I think the public's excited to know that they're going to see a lot more of the First Lady and being engaged and involved in many of the topics that are facing Albuquerque. So we appreciate you taking the time. Now, I have to say this because you're a couple and Valentine's Day is coming up. So we thought it'd be <laughs> really fun. Yeah, don't forget. <laughs> Whatever you do. <laughs> it'd be fun to ask you to list some of the things you both love about our city. Sure. Well, you know, for me, I mean, of course, there's so many. Uh, right. And uh, but just to pick, you know, I think about sometimes we haven't been able to do this lately. But uh, if you if you drive central from one end to the other, you capture so much of all of the things I love about Albuquerque, whether it's our cultural history as you go through Old Town and then you have the sort of the Mother Road feel through Knob Hill. But then even through the International District, you get a sense of sort of international trends that are coming together in Albuquerque. Uh, and then, of course, there's great restaurants along oh, the yeah. way. Uh, and it's absolutely beautiful on a clear day, especially at either end of Central when you sort of look across the city. And so that's that's one of my favorite things to do. And it also, look, there's also some reality there, too, which as much as I love it, it also reminds me how much work we have to do. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that uh, that's, that's one thing that I think is just extra special. And there's not a lot of cities where you can really experience that. Uh, all across that, even even crossing the Bosque and the river uh, and going up onto the West Mesa, you really, I think, capture a lot of what we're all about. That's true. You know, we forget being in Albuquerque, as you say, until you go to other cities sometimes, what kind of vantage point and vistas and views that we have and how unobstructed it is. And particularly, I never really thought about that, just driving old Route 66 or our, our Main Street Albuquerque really gives us that perspective of the integrity of the history and that it was, you know, the mother road, and there's still so many reminders along that. That's a, that's a great I mean, idea. I remember. We used to cruise it in high school, right? too. So, you know. <laughs> and there's that. that. <laughs> I remember as a kid going to visit family for the first time in Chicago, and right from the top of these high buildings, and they were saying, on a good day, you can see, you know, 15 miles. <laughs> and thinking, you know, in Albuquerque, you could be standing in one of these places right. on the ground, and on a good day, you can see... 40, 70 miles. Right. You can see to Santa Fe. You can yeah. see all over the place. I think one of the pieces for me that I love the most is being out of the car in Albuquerque and especially in some of the outdoor spaces. So I grew up along the irrigation ditch in the Bosque and spent mm. tons of time with my siblings just playing um, out there, you know, and how quickly you can be from an urban environment and then really feel like you're out, sort of separated in nature. Um, and so we love that with our kids too. We don't get very far because we're looking at every little little stick and every right. little rock <laughs> and every little leaf along the way so we can spend hours on sort of a, a quarter mile loop but yeah. it is a it's an amazing gem to have for the city. It's true. We, we are truly uh, blessed with the amounts of open space and that we have. And, and you're right. And especially with a two and four year old, you're going to stop and look at every rock yep. and pebble. So <laughs> now there was something that you wanted to invite Albuquerqueans to do to tweet out on Valentine's Day about yeah. what they love, right? You know, we know uh, we've got you know, lots of challenges in Albuquerque, but there's so much also to celebrate. And so yeah. why not on Valentine's Day show your love for the city? Mm -hmm. So uh, go ahead and tweet out at uh, hashtag I love ABQ, things that you love about Albuquerque. And uh, it's going to be, I think, a fun little celebration of who we are. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you both for sharing your thoughts and ideas about Albuquerque, and especially thank you for joining us, uh, Liz. And, Thanks and, for having uh, me. Good luck in your role thank you. as First Lady. It sounds like you've really embraced it, and good things are already coming of that. And I want to remind everyone that Block by Block, or I should say Mayor Keller, Block by Block, airs on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock right here on GovTV. Uh, we'll be airing a new show every month, and you can catch that on the city's and many other city programs 
programs on the city's YouTube channel. In the meantime, catch up with Mayor Keller on Facebook and Twitter just by looking up Mayor Keller, hashtag CABQ block by block. We'll see you next month. Because we are a city that is full of incredible and special people.